Have you ever received a notification like? And here's the kicker. You weren't even on their website. That is the magic of web push notifications. Even if users aren't actively on your site, even if they've closed the entire browser, your message still shows up in their notification tray. We can spam our users with ads all day now. Oops, hold on. Before we start sending push notifications, let's talk about the ethical use of web push notifications. Here's the thing. Your users allowed your site to send them notifications because they trust you. Abuse that trust and boom, they'll block your notifications or worse, never come back to your website again. So before implementing push notifications, ask yourself, what do you actually want to achieve with this notification? Every push message should be useful, time sensitive, and always, always require user permission before sending the first one. Let's ask ourselves, is someone waiting in real time for an update? Like, your file is ready now, that kind of notification? Or is it really breaking news worth interrupting their day? After thinking through these questions, now yes, it's time to learn how to implement web push notifications in ASP.NET Core MVC. Let's dive in. By the way, the full source code is ready for you to download. Links in the description below. Now, first things first, we need to install this NuGet package called WebPush. Next, we need to get the Vapid keys. Wow, Vapid, sounds so yeah. fancy. What's this? Vapid stands for Voluntary Application Server Identification. It tells the browser that, hey browser, I'm a legit server, not some shady spam bot. Here's how it works. You generate a Vapid public and private key pair. The public key goes to the user's browser during subscription. It's like giving your name at the front gate. Then when your server sends out a push message, it signs it using the private key. Kind of like sealing a letter with your royal wax stamp. The push service checks the signature with your public key to make sure it really came from you, not some suspicious people trying to spam your users with ads or scams. So yeah, without Vapid, push services wouldn't trust you and you'd be like the suspicious scammers. Now, let's generate the keys. We'll use Vapid Helper, generate Vapid keys, to create a pair of keys. Later, we'll see the generated keys printed in the console. Inside appsettings.json, we'll store both the public and private keys. But that's not all. We also need to specify a subject. This tells the push service who the sender is. Why does this matter? Well, if something goes wrong, like abuse reports, misconfigurations, or security issues, the push service like Google knows how to contact you. The subject can be an email address using the MailTo scheme, or it can be a URL pointing to a contact page. All right, now let's run the project once to get those keys. Cool, copy them from the console and paste them into appsettings.json. Now comment out the key generation code, we don't want to regenerate keys every time someone visits the homepage. Next up, in program.cs, let's register the Vapid Details class so we can inject it and read the keys from appsettings.json. Now let's grab the public key and pass it from the controller to the view using ViewData. In the view, we'll assign it to a variable. We'll need it in the JavaScript section later. On the homepage, let's add a page title and a hint section. This hint section will show different messages like, please allow notifications, permission granted, or permission denied. Below that, let's add a script section. We'll start by defining the three different hint messages and functions to display the hint messages. When the page loads, check the current notification dot permission value. If it's default, that means the user hasn't decided yet, so we need to ask them, We'll create an async function to request permission. Show different hint messages based on what the user responded to the permission. After permission is granted, we'll then subscribe to the push service. Okay, now let's proceed to create the subscribe function. This is the function that handles service worker registration and push subscription. It's where the magic starts. 
First things first, let's check if the browser supports service workers. But wait, what is a service worker and why do we need it for web push notifications? Think of it as your little background assistant, quietly working behind the scenes. Even when your website is closed, this assistant is still listening. It can handle background tasks, manage caching for offline use, and most importantly, catch push notifications sent from the server. Yup, without a service worker, push notifications simply won't work. So, if the user's browser doesn't support it, we'll show a red warning message to let them know. Next, let's add a JavaScript file for our service worker in the root folder. This file is your assistant's brain. It's the script that receives push messages and tells the browser what to do with them. Then, in our JavaScript, we'll register the service worker script. Now, we'll convert our vapid public key from base64 into a uint8 array and then use it to subscribe the user to push notifications. Once subscribed, we'll send the subscription object to the server. To handle that, we'll create a push controller and a subscribe action. This step is to ensure that only users who have actually subscribed will receive notifications. For demo purpose, I'll store the subscription data in a static list. But in real app, you'd want to save it to your database. All right, that wraps up the first part of the process. We've asked for notification permission, registered a service worker, and subscribed the user to push notifications. Now it's time for the fun part, sending the notification. In the models folder, let's create a new file called push subscription model. Inside, we'll add three classes. These classes will help structure the data we need to send notifications. Next, in push controller, add these two using statements. Inject vapid details so we can access the public and private keys from appsettings.json. Now, let's create the send notification action. This method will do exactly what it sounds like, send a notification to all subscribed users. We'll test it using Postman later, sending a message as the payload. Inside the action, we'll loop through all the subscriptions. For each subscription, first, Check if it has valid auth and P256DH keys. If not, it means something went wrong during the subscription process, so we'll skip it. For valid subscriptions, we'll assign the endpoint and keys to the push subscription. Then, serialize the payload into JSON format. Now comes the exciting part, using the web push client to actually send the notification. Just pass in the subscription, the payload message, and the vapid details which contain our vapid public and private keys. And that's it. Push notifications are working now. All right, it's time to test our web push notification. But before we dive in, here's something super important to know. Web push notifications only work over HTTPS. Luckily, when we run our app locally, it's served over HTTPS localhost, so we're good. But if you publish your app to a non-secure HTTP site, the push notification simply won't work. Also, quick tip, I've disabled all my browser extensions while testing. Because some extensions may have their own service workers running in the background, and they could interfere with ours. So if you or your users have a bunch of extensions installed, it's normal if push notifications behave a little weird. At the end of the day, it's all up to the user's browser. All right, everything's ready. Let's run the web app. When the page loads, you should see a pop-up asking for notification permission. Click allow and boom, you'll see a little hint that says permission was granted. Now head over to Postman. If you don't have an account, go ahead and sign up, it's free. Then choose post and paste your local server URL in the address bar and we can close our web app tab because later we wanna test sending notifications without the tab open. Now, if you see a message asking you to download the Postman desktop agent, go ahead and download it because we need it to make local request. You can also Google Postman desktop agent if you can't find the download link. Once the Postman desktop agent installed, we can continue in Postman. Now, append slash push slash send to your URL. That's the route we set up to send a notification via the push controller. In the body, choose raw and set the type to JSON. Then type your message like this. Before we hit that send button, a few last checks. Is your device in silent or do not disturb mode? 
In Windows, check if Focus Assist is turned on. If yes, turn it off. Make sure notifications are allowed for your browser. Now click Send. Yes, we received the notification even with the tab closed. Now let's push it a step further. Close the entire Chrome browser, like completely exit it. Now open another browser. I'm using Edge and log into Postman there. Trigger the same request again. No notification yet? Wait a few minutes. Okay, it quietly appears in the notification tray. This delay is totally normal, and here's why. By default, Chrome doesn't run background apps when it's closed. That means service workers don't stay alive when the browser is completely shut down. If users want instant notifications even with Chrome closed, they need to check the setting. Otherwise, notifications will show up a bit late like a sneaky little ninja. Okay, one last tip before we wrap up. If you make any changes to your service worker script and want to test the new version, you'll need to unregister the old one first. Then, build a project to refresh the page and resubscribe to test. It's a wrap. Thanks for watching and happy coding.